What's going on, my PT peeps, my Walking Dead family, and my fighters? I'm one eye bright, also known as PT. I don't know if I'm winking or blinking, but I'm definitely thinking about The Walking Dead World Beyond Season 1, Episode 1, the premiere, the pilot episode of the new spinoff show. So, obviously, spoiler warning, but also mature content warning for the stuff we're going to cover in this video. So, if you haven't seen The World Beyond Season 1, Episode 1, please stop watching now. If you want to know about spoilers, then keep watching, and hopefully you've seen it, and then you can let me know. But first, guys, before we get to it, I'll make it quick. Please hit that subscribe button. Help us achieve our goal. It really helps out the channel. We have a goal of 100,000 subscribers. Hitting the like button is something easy you can do as well. If you want to donate, you don't have to, but there's a couple of different ways to do it. Patreon, live stream, super chats, membership program, but also my book series available on Amazon, the paperback and digital format on Kindle. Hopefully you join the fight and pick up your copy today. Now, overall, I enjoy The World Beyond Season 1, Episode 1. It starts off with some walkers. It's a dream that Iris is happening. And you really follow Iris more than anybody, so I wonder if she's really the lead of the show. Maybe it's Hope and Iris, but either way, it's a dream. Iris is a character that is somebody that I liked. I liked Hope, Iris, Elton, Silas, Felix, and Huck was okay. But it's only one episode, so we'll see where the characters go. You can see the differences between Hope and and Iris. Hope stays away in the luggage area of the bus for some reason. The walker gets smashed by the Jeep, which they have gas by the way, unless it's electric. The walker comes to the side of the bus and holds on and it's real dramatic. But Hope is there to see her mother, Carrie Bennett. You see the Bennetts. Hope, Iris, Carrie, and Dr. Leo Bennett. You don't see Leo and Carrie except for flashbacks, but it's interesting because you see Carrie Bennett, 1979 to NSF. So is NSF National Skyfall Day? I'm not sure the day because or the year because you don't see it there, but you see a lot of graves there. So a lot of people were lost that day. And it's nice that you see Hope go to the graves. But as she looks up, she sees five. I know there's only four in the picture, but there's a fifth helicopter and four of them have containers. So I wonder what the containers were for. We'll talk about it at the end. But Felix is there to meet Elizabeth Kubik from the Civic Republic military. So we may find out that the Civic Republic is kind of its own organization and the Civic Republic military is its own. And I guess Hope, you know, sabotaged the welcome banner and she gives her the finger. So you know that Hope doesn't like CRM and Hope's like the wild child and Iris is like the goody goody, you know, president of the National Honor Society and everything here. But it's funny because they're at Monument High and you see Elton, is teaching a karate class so we'll see that come back around that he can take care of himself and they do things for reasons on these show they were training they were teaching they were learning and huck was teaching hope how to take care of herself and that's what you want to see you want to see the adults teaching the kids and then the kids teaching the adults and you know these are teenagers they want to go out see the world explore get out where they're from that's what every teenager wants to do but hope and iris are opposites the way they see the world, but I'm sure that's gonna change. And I thought it was interesting when you see that Wyoming poster there. We'll see if anything comes back around with that. But I like the dynamic of Hope and Iris. Then you see Iris meeting with her psychiatrist or her shrink or her therapist or whatever you wanna call this lady, but they got some creature comforts here. They got safety, security, therapist, and they talk about when the sky fell. And these are the Bennets. You see Carrie, Hope, Iris, and Dr. Leo Bennett. Now the cabinet. That was interesting because one, how are they receiving and sending messages? And I guess they just received messages, but that was a point of interest to me and probably everybody because you see communication with Hope and Iris from their dad, Dr. Leo Bennett. And I just wonder how the transmissions are coming. Is a 90s printer fax machine kind of thing, but we've seen previous messages. And if you look to the left, it's kind of blurry, but at the very bottom, it says, Will says hi. And that's Felix's boyfriend. So you read these, you can stop and read it on there too. But these are from Dr. Leo Bennett and everything's good. These are earlier messages. And then we see the trouble message. My safety not assured. So definitely something is a problem here where Dr. Leo Bennett is. And we find out that he's in New York. The girls go to Felix who really has, you know, custody of the kids when Dr. Leo Bennett went away. I guess it's just Dr. Bennett. I love saying his name, Dr. Leo Bennett. But Felix is a character that I liked. He's the father role, the protective role. And then later on, we see another one. It's gone bad. Keeping my head down. I'll find help. Don't tell the council. Don't tell Felix, which I find interesting. Why doesn't he want to tell Felix? Maybe he fears that they would come there. Then we find this picture here that clearly Iris is an artist, which I find pretty interesting. And you see the map. You see Portland, Civic Republic, 
Campus Colony and Omaha. So Campus Colony and Omaha are two different things. Civic Republic is right there around the Nevada, Utah area of there. And you see Portland where they all have a connection, which was pretty interesting. And of course, all the question marks, see our other video about that for sure. I thought the walkers were pretty cool. I mean, I know some people thought it was cheesy, but you got to see from a different angle when the sky fell and the airplane. And it was interesting to see the connection with Hope, Carrie, Iris, Dr. Bennett, and this lady, right? You'll find out who this lady is later in the episode. And it is kind of like some dramatic story that's gotta be like, man, what are the odds of that, right? But it's fiction, it's drama. You gotta have these moments and it's pretty interesting, that's for sure. But you get to see when the kids are little and I keep saying they were born in the zombie apocalypse, but they grew up in the zombie apocalypse. Then you see the meeting of Lieutenant Commander Elizabeth Kublik and Hope and Iris. And look at the jacket, it's gray with a black undershirt. And she's kind of helpful to the girls here, which I find interesting because when you're wearing gray, it means you're a little bit of both, good and bad. And symbolic maybe means nothing, maybe it's something. But Elizabeth Kubik gives this to Iris, which has gotta come back around at some point of this series where Dr. Bennett is in New York State. She's helpful, it's interesting. She also says something very interesting that she has a daughter that works for CRM. The theory going around is that it's Isabel. If it's not, then that's a big missed opportunity in my opinion, but are they related? I'm gonna make that video and share it with you next week, but I'll talk about why or why not. But I think they could be and they should be for multiple reasons. I do like the idea, but what's up with this haircut, right? So we see it with Isabel, who's connected with CRM. Then we see this with Elton's mom, that's not connected with CRM, but it's the same haircut. But the first time we saw this weird haircut is with Jadis. And we're like, hmm, What's going up with this CRM haircut? Is there something to it? I just don't know. Then we see Felix in the background looking after the kids, which was pretty interesting that he still had that protective role, and I hope he's a good guy throughout the series. The kids were drinking and boozing as teenagers do, sometimes, not all, but you know, kids will be kids sometimes. They get a new message from Dr. Bennett, their dad, and I thought it was interesting about the genetics component. They're in the office, you see the double helix, DNA, genetics could play a factor down the road. And then we see Iris's psychiatrist, therapist, you know, she died. She probably had emphysema or COPD. And I thought it was interesting about these uh, security measures around the door, the barricade there. Pretty smart. It was pretty smart to do. And it's for this reason. I mean, if they have a walker that dies in the room or an empty, they call them empties, they're not going to bite everyone in this dorm or apartment area, the living quarters. And I guess it's happened more and more. They have a whole team for it and they're ready. So again, this is 10 years into the zombie apocalypse. It's monument day, monuments to the past. So it was interesting to see what a community would be that they're built for this. Some people still do stupid things in The Walking Dead, 10 years in the zombie apocalypse, but not this area. It's pretty smart. But ultimately, Elizabeth Kublik, again, has the gray jacket with the black undershirt, which shows me that she's a little bit of good and a little bit of bad. Usually in movies and shows, symbolism of white is good, pure, black is bad, evil, just that simple. Gray is a little bit of both. So maybe this character is good and bad at the same time. But I like the speech that Iris was giving everybody, and I guess she has some authority. She's the student council president, and she's really smart, and she, her dad was a really respected person around the community, but I liked her speech. It wasn't like, yeah, it was real, and I think everybody appreciated that. I know I did, because it was like a real speech where she wasn't like, yeah, everything's gonna be great, we're gonna make it. She was like, I don't trust you, and here's why. You know, I lost a good friend today, I lost this, my dad's not here, and it was real. It seemed like a real thing. And overall, I believe these actors. I believe these kids are doing a good job, and it makes you feel for the characters and the actors, and that's what it's all about with good storytelling and acting, in my opinion. Now let's get back to this lady, right? It was kind of a big moment, because you found out that this lady was related to Elton. It was Elton's mom, and it was a nice shocker. And it makes you think of like, what are the odds of that? Of all the people, of all the area, how is this one lady, the mother of this kid that's with them? But again, it's a fictional thing, a drama. So stuff like that's gonna happen. The whole thing with the Triceratop horn seemed really far-fetched to me, but it was kind of cool to add that to the weapon. You know, Elton liked dinosaurs, so it was pretty cool to have something like that. But it's a shame that Carrie died by the hands of a person and not even a walker. And Hope was right there and she actually took out Elton's mom. So that really you know, changed Hope's life in a huge way for two reasons. Hope took out this lady and she lost her mother. 
as a child, a very young child. So you know this is going to come back around with Hope and Elton. And man, that should be a big, crazy moment for the series. And then here comes the big journey to go find Dr. Bennett. They're going to go from the campus colony to Omaha and then probably Omaha to somewhere, but eventually get to New York and hopefully find Dr. Bennett and maybe even Rick. Silas is the guy that's like the gentle giant. He's misunderstood. He's a nice guy, but he had to do some crazy things in the zombie apocalypse. So he's probably the big gentle giant that's going to protect the kids and we'll have to see how it goes down but they all have their roles you know it's the traditional like the big guy the quiet guy the girl that's the rebel the girl that's the nerd who does it the certain way the geek who can take care of himself but he knows some things you know they all have their roles and i like that about it and i think every good show or even movie has their different roles for each character because everybody watching could be a different role and see themselves in one of the characters and then it's got the stand by me feel when they got to roll out. If you've never seen that movie, definitely check it out. It's a great 80s movie. But you see the solar panels, you see how they got power, some things are explained because they had a lot of creature comforts at this place. And they wonder why, like, how do they have this? How are they able to get around? How do they have power? But the kids are out and about. They left a note for Felix, who was his birthday. They took his jackets. Well, they took Felix and Will's jacket. They took some food and an S pole. I'll talk about the S pole in a second. But Huck and Felix are going to go out there and save them and help them. While the kids are going most likely from the campus colony to Omaha, where I believe Nebraska State University is. And of course the kids have to go through when the sky fell, the airplanes, where Carrie was shot, where Elton's mom was shot. I don't even know if Elton knew that, but you get to see them go through the same area where the airplane was. Hope and Iris have a nice moment. They're there together. And at the end of the day, I would assume these kids care about each other. They're going to look out for each other. They're going to help each other. And what Hope has in her hand is an S pole, which I believe is where the blade comes out. It's like, whoosh. but it seems like it's overkill. I just think they should have the blade out all the time. What if it wasn't working right? What if the blade wouldn't pop out and it needs to take out a walker or an empty? You know, Silas has the big wrench and they're out on their own. So they're going to have to take out the empties, even though it's another name instead of walkers. And they don't call them zombies. And then this, this was the big moment, right? At the end of the episode was like, whoa. CRM is bad. They killed all these people. And you see, Elizabeth Kubik is all in black and the gray jacket is gone. And I wonder if they're going to put the bodies and or the walkers or a little bit of both in the containers here and transport them for experiments to work on the cure or some aspect there. Remember this blue paint at the very end of the episode? It was one of the walkers that Huck and Felix were spray painting for the migration. That's where they were checking where they went, how they would be, where they would go, and where they'd migrate, which was pretty interesting. This guy, we didn't get his name. He looks like Ramsey Bolton for me, right? Anyone Game of Thrones? Anyone? Ramsey Bolton, terrible. But he's another terrible guy there. They are talking about she's not here. And I'm guessing she's talking about Hope and or Iris, probably Iris. But all these people were killed. That seems far-fetched to me, right? Somebody has to have gotten away to tell everybody what happened. And at the same time, Huck and Felix got out of the campus colony right before stuff happened. And why didn't they take a Jeep? That'd be much better to get around, but they're on foot to go after the kids. And there you have it. Overall, I thought the episode was really good. It was a great start. We only got 10 episodes this season. So this was one of 10. There's nine more to go. Character development needs to be fast and furious. And I know some people didn't like the episode. They let me know in the comments for my other review, but I thought it was good. It's what it is. CRM connection, more depth of the story of them, see where they go, maybe a possible connection with Rick, and Fear the Walking Dead, maybe Isabel. I thought it was good. I feel for the characters. I like the characters in the story so far. How about you? Let me know your thoughts. Post your comments below. Stay safe and tell them, Daryl. Oh, we love you guys.